Anin Pojo, Wabino acquired the Shinikas, Makwando them. Sagin don't she? Ag Shemanito, me which the kit, the matis even on jet. Me which kind the kit, a me young meno abiting or marking Jimusayam, Buxendam in the Shanegach, Jimusayam. Can I get a watch a manach to one? Can I go yach a manach young it all? Me way, Buxendaman. I eager in Chibinani cinnamon, Kishawat is even. Okoe Kuma no chiak, Hayawat Kitimag is yok. Kano we can't see now, I go name eh, Menopimat is even. Nemeshom cinnanic, no comenanic, we know, Gikenda nawa. Peter Shue, Pek send the man. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Stephen Boris, the director and CEO of the Winnipeg Art Gallery and Kamayuk. Uzu Anin, Jamie Isaac Nishnikaz, No Dem Seguin First Nation, Turtle Island. Hello, I'm Jamie Isaac, member of Seguin First Nation, Treaty One Territory, and I'm the curator of Indigenous and Contemporary Art at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. It's our pleasure to welcome you to the virtual opening of Nadobe to Draw Water the first Winnipeg Indigenous Triennial, presented by BMO Financial Group. This is a big night. It's part of the inaugural year of the Inui Art Centre, and with this triennial, we mark the beginning of a major contemporary Indigenous show every three years at Wag Kamayuk. This is really the start of something incredible. Wag Kamayuk is located on the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Inanawak, Anishinawak, on the unceded territory of the Dakota and the Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are committed to working in partnership with the leadership and the guidance of Inui First Nations and the Métis Nation of this land. The water in Winnipeg is supplied from Shoal Lake 40 on Treaty 3 territory, which as a result has been under a boil water advisory since 1997. To start in a good way, I would like to introduce Elder Dr. Mary Kershane to give a welcoming. Dr. Mary Kershane named and gifted the exhibition Nato Bay with the late Elder Ken Kershane. Following the welcoming, Elder Ivy Kennard and Knowledge Keeper Erica Daniels will lead us in a water ceremony. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome this exhibition and it is called Nadobi. As women traditionally were the, the responsible ones to look after the water. And it, we carry water as we carry our children for nine months before they are born. So we still carry this tradition. And the little ones that you see here, those are fourth generation of women that is part of my family. Nadobi means to draw water and we know that our waters are not as good as they should be so we have to do everything to conserve and to make sure that it is healthy. Uh-huh.
Thank you, Elder Dr. Kershane, Elder Ivy Kennard, and Knowledge Keeper Erica Daniels for sharing these powerful teachings. I am Dr. Ernest Chalakas, Chair of the WAG Board of Governors, and I am so excited to connect with you all virtually on such a momentous occasion. Thank you, BMO Financial Group, for making Nadobe to draw water possible and for investing in Kamaya, the new Inuit Art Center. We also send our gratitude to programming partner, Manitoba Indigenous and Northern Relations, supporters, Australian Council for the Arts and Outfront Media, and museum partners, Pataka Art and Museum and Melbourne Museum. And of course, a hearty congratulations to the curators and artists. The world feels a little smaller as we come together I'm now pleased to introduce my fellow board member, Diane Rusin. Miigwech. Thank you, Ernest. I'd like to express our deep gratitude to BMO Financial Group for walking alongside the WAG on this journey to greater inclusivity and representation. An amazing community of donors, members, advisors, staff, volunteers, and artists sustain WAG Hamayak now and for future generations. We are grateful to you all for supporting our mission to inspire, inform, and connect through the universal language of art. Miigwech to everyone watching for being with us as we celebrate the first Winnipeg Indigenous Triennial. Nadobe to draw water brings together some of the latest work from Turtle Island, North America, Australia, Aotearoa, New Zealand. And putting together a tri-national show in the midst of a pandemic is no small feat. And the result we have here is spectacular. I extend huge congratulations to the curators, Jamie Isaac, Ruben Friend, Ioana Gordon-Smith, and Kimberly Moulton, and all of the artists. The timing of Nadobe could not be more pressing. The worldwide problem of water pollution and scarcity are threatening our lands, health and future. Throughout history, art has proven a powerful tool to raise awareness and enact change. And here with Nadobe, we hope you will not be only inspired by the fabulous art, but by indigenous ways of caring for the earth. Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls on all Canadians to examine our colonial structures and assumptions, including museums and galleries. Nadobe to draw water and the ongoing Winnipeg Indigenous Triennial are reflective of Wag Kamayuk's commitment to responding to the TRC's calls to action. This transformative initiative 
would not have been possible without the generosity of our presenting sponsor and valued partner, BMO Financial Group. It's now my pleasure to introduce Kristen Kennedy, the Regional Vice President for BMO. Thank you, Stephen. On behalf of BMO Financial Group, we are thrilled to partner with our good friends at The WAG to amplify Indigenous voices and to celebrate the opening of Nado Bay to draw water. This work is timely, relevant, promoting a unifying theme of water. These works highlight the generations who came before and explored interdependency in how Indigenous nations carry forward knowledge and with the critical importance to preserve for the future. Art informs, inspires, and enriches our lives. When we invite understanding through the vibrant lens of art, our perspective shifts, and we're able to foster conversations centered in acknowledging and celebrating how cultural diversity makes us stronger. This innovative triennial features perspectives that are unique, responsive, and rich, with centuries of scientific knowledge a reflection of Indigenous nations across the world. We hope that Nado Bay leaves you inspired with a refreshed view to our vital connection. On behalf of BMO Financial Group, our congratulations extend to the WAG team, to each of the artists, and to Nado Bay's curators, who we'll hear from now. Nado Bay, to draw water, gathers together Indigenous international perspectives about water. The exhibition features art from Turtle Island, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Australia. It includes interdisciplinary art and new commissioned works from artists of Indigenous nations across the globe, including painting, weaving, textiles, new media, film, installation and sculpture, print, text, and photography. Their work reflects on environmental, political, and cultural connections and relationships to water. Born into the world from water carriers, our mothers, givers of life, our bodies are made mostly of water. We need water to survive, to nourish, to cleanse. It is fundamentally and profoundly linked to nearly every aspect of our lives. Water has the power to both give and take lives. Changes in the world's oceans, lakes, rivers, creeks, streams, the aqueducts, and water tables are affecting our health and the life of our communities. Industry and economics, privatization of water, and the building of hydroelectric jams do not honor the treaties or traditional subsistence connections to water like fishing, hunting, and access to clean drinking water. Water is life, water is sacred, and it is the inheritance of future generations. The artists representing perspectives from Turtle Island are Christy Belcourt, the Anonym Collective with Christy Belcourt and Isaac Murdoch, Rebecca Belmore, Kevin Brownlee, Lindsay Dobbin, Maria Hupfield, Marianne Nicholson, William Noah, and Jesse Unar. And from our extensive collection, I worked with the Winnipeg Art Gallery's assistant curator, Jocelyn Pirinen, to select work by Ashguriak, Mina Inuktalik, Annie Okituk, Luki Irut, Abraham Anjik Rubin, Nelson Takiruk, as well as working with Destiny Seymour from Indigo Arrows for the exhibition's visual designs. I'm grateful for their vision, respect, artistic care, and I want to thank all of the artists involved. Hua kina e, hua kina e. Hua kina te rangi e tū, hua kina te papa e tāpato. Hua kina ko tēnei whakātū ranga, he whakātū ranga toi, he whakātū ranga wai. Ko rupa friend tōku ingoa, he uri no te waka tai nui o te wai kato. No era nei rā te mihi kia koutou ngā mana whenua o te motu hōmi. My name is Ruben Friend. I'm the director of Hataka Art Gallery and Museum in New Zealand, Aotearoa, and it's my great pleasure to be one of the curators of Nga Dobe to draw water. Tāna uh, my name is Iwana Gordon-Smith. I'm from the Samoan villages of Reawa'a and Pale'ura on my mum's side. 
English on my dad's side and I live in Aotearoa where I was born and raised. Um, and I'm the Curator Māori Pacific at Pātaka Ata Museum and like Ribbon, thrilled to be a guest curator for Nodobe to Draw Water. Uh, Nodobe to Draw Water takes water as its central theme um, and water has obviously become a pressing issue and although it's reached a crisis point globally, uh, this exhibition is a chance to remember that water has been entrenched in Māori history, stories and practices since forever. For Māori, we relate to water in two different ways. Firstly, we came from the Pacific, we come from islands, and when we recite our genealogies, we refer to the ships, the great waka that brought us here, and we reinforce those connections through our oral histories. But as we've become a more land-based culture, the mountains and rivers have become more important in our sense of identity, and we often will recite the names of these mountains and the rivers when we recite our lineage. So what I said earlier in my introduction was that my name is Ruben Friend, but I descend from the river of the Waikato, which means the river that floods in the central North Island. And that iwi or that nation is known as Tainui, and we connect to Eastern Polynesia through the Tainui Waka. Uh, Nadobe to Draw Water includes work by five Māori artists uh, Israel Burt, Jeremy Leatanu'u, Nico Hinden, Nova Paul and Rachel Rakina. Uh, they are selected for their commitment to water in their respective artistic practices and together they present a wide range of views on how water infiltrates our daily lives. Um, respectively, their works address uh, the struggles for water sovereignty, the role of water in healing and moving between realms, the reclamation of navigational knowledge, um, the various ways in which water appears in our quotidian lives and the ways in which these daily appearances uh, might inform how we tackle more global issues. The diverse perspectives expressed in Adobe suggest that water infiltrates every aspect of Indigenous practices, epistemologies and histories. As Reuben said, Indigenous identity is often defined through relationships to land. Here, Artists consider what it might mean to be defined, connected and located through relationships with water. For Māori, we often talk about being tangata whenua or people of the land as you want to mention. And with this exhibition, it is an opportunity for us to go back and look at what it means to be tangata wai or tangata moana, people of water, people of the ocean. And through the ocean, we're connected to people across the Pacific, across the moana nui, creating opportunities for solidarity, to work together, to learn from each other. And I think it's particularly important in this uh, time that we're living in today. It's a great privilege to be working with our co-curators, Kimberly and Jamie, and all of the team at Winnipeg. We wish you all the best for the opening. We're sorry we couldn't be there in person, um, but we're looking forward to getting our inoculations and uh, jumping on the waka and paddling over. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kimberly Moulton. Um, my people are the Yorta Yorta people. Um, my country is northeast of Victoria, which is the southern state of Australia, or what we now know as Australia. I'm the senior curator of Southeastern Aboriginal Collections for Museums Victoria and co-curator of Nadol Bay to Draw Water. It has been an honour to consider water and our cultures with my co-curators from Turtle Island and Aotearoa and to bring artists together to be in dialogue around these themes that are so important to us as sovereign peoples. For our communities, water is life. We have cultural affiliations to water that connect back thousands of generations. My totem is the freshwater long-necked turtle and I grew up going to the river and learning to respect it. At present time, there are issues that are pertinent to our people with the ever evolving climate change, with struggles of water protection and with First Peoples knowledge systems around care and ongoing survival of these ecologies needing to be heard. The artists um, that I selected as part of this show uh, from what we now know as Australia are diverse Aboriginal cultural peoples that are connected to freshwater and saltwater in dynamic ways. 
The selection of the six artists, I considered um, regional representation with Australia and the artist practice that uh, both contributing uh, conversations around water um, that include themes of water management, of speaking to saltwater country and freshwater country, to cultural connections and ecosystems of the animal kin that rely on it. And also the use of water in aquaculture practice and cultural making. The artists from across the country and um, our country is big, um, but we have Vicky Cousins, who is a Kirei Wurrung Gunachimara artist from the Western part of Victoria which is famous for its ancient aquaculture systems that are, that are the oldest eel and fish trapping systems in the world. This is at a sacred extinct volcanic site called Buj Bim, which recently received UNESCO heritage listing due to its significance uh, and the cultural heritage in the landscape, which includes eel traps, dams, and stone houses that are tens of thousands of years old. Vicky's work speaks to these histories and her practice of being a story woman connected to fresh and salt water and a master possum skin cloak maker. From the top end of Australia to the rivers of the south, we have many diverse Aboriginal cultures and landscapes. We are not one mob, but we are many groups with distinct relationships to our lands, our languages and cultural practices that have adapted to the change that colonisation brought. The destruction of our river systems have been a product of colonization, of irrigation and destructive farms, farming practices and bad decisions. The Murray-Darling Basin is considered one of the most important river systems of Australia and it is in grave danger due to the misuse and disrespect of the river. It crosses four states and a territory and it is a crucial life source both to the animals and ecosystems and people that rely on it, but also to the intangible cultural heritage of country. Fish are dying, parts of the river drying up, and there are movements across the country to protect it. Nikki Cumston is a Barkindji woman whose people are of the river, the river people, or the Barker in her language, which is a river that runs off this basin. Nikki has been documenting the change of, of the river, of her river, in a call to protect and to bring attention to the catastrophic changes that are occurring and for her country to be heard, really. The series uh, in the exhibition, another photographic series, is by James Tyler called The Economics of Water. And this highlights the environmental damage to the Murray-Darling River system from poor water management and his work speaks directly to the impact of agriculture on the river system. Water holds stories of ancestors and Ishmael Marika, a Yolnu artist from the very top end of Australia, has shared with us his song line or a song line from his country. And this is a song of ceremony and knowledge that has been passed down to him. It is called Ruyapa which is the story of the salt water between Yukala and Brima Island. Across the top end to another part of the country is the Pepperminati community where Regina Pilawak Wilson comes from. And Regina shares with us the art of weaving fishnets from her community and also the significance of transferring this knowledge into painting. So she started to paint her weaves and her fishnets. The community of Pepperminati is a wide, sorry, the, the community has a wide stream of water and a series of pools, which are sacred sites uh, for Regina's people. Her cultural creative expressions are deeply connected to place and the materials of her landscape and also in teaching for future generations. Further south in Moreton Bay, we have Kwandamooka woman, Eliza Jane Carmichael or Lisi as she's known. Uh, Lisi is connected to both salt water, part of her country being an island, and also freshwater, where the tea tree lakes and freshwater estuaries meet the sea. Lisi's work is embedded with reflection of country, memory, and family, and she and her family have played a vital role in the regeneration of weaving and arts practice of the Kwandamuka people. 
These artists form a beautiful conversation with our First Peoples kin from Turtle Island and Aotearoa, who are all sharing their cultural connections to water and their struggles in fighting for country and for water. It's been a huge honour to work with Ioana and Ruben and also Jamie on this show. Um, and thank you so much, Jamie, and to your family for gifting us um, your language of Nadobe. It, it means a lot. Thank you to Winnipeg Art Gallery staff um, and Pataka Art and Museum. Thank you to Museums Victoria and also to Australia Council for the Arts uh, for making this happen and supporting uh, this Tri-Nations uh, network of artists and curators. Uh, that work is so important. Uh, but most of all, thank you to the artists. Thank you for sharing your important work and thank you for making this work. Um, because it brings to light the significance of water for our people. Um, it will start conversations, I'm sure, for the visitors and the audience that get to see this, um, both in the gallery and online. Uh, and it just contributes to the ongoing um, care that we must have for our, our water country. So thank you. We now have two special performances. First, a drum song called Be Matissa Wewin by Jenna Wirch, a strong Anishinaabe Kwe advocate and published author from the north end of Winnipeg. Jenna Licious Wirch is very active in the community and mentors other young people to help them realize and reach their full potential. This performance was filmed at the Odena Celebration Circle near the convergence of the Red and Assiniboine Rivers, a gathering place for many decades. At the Forks in Winnipeg, we thank you for sharing your space. Jenna's performance will be followed by a spoken word by Victoria Redson. This Winnipeg-based spoken word poet, performer, and filmmaker is Denisulin and Nahayatha from Reindeer Lake on Northern Turtle Island. They, ex they explore writing, visual arts, and activism through a poetic lens. They create stories gifted to them from the blood memory of their ancestors and voice experiences in rhymes from the eyes of a two-spirit youth. Miigwech to both of our performers and uh, please enjoy.
She swam reluctant against the current as it was cold and numbed her toes and nose. She opened her eyes underwater and welcomed the transformation of self. She turned into the smooth rocks, cold waters, and a family a trout. She swam so hard and looked up only to see destruction. She imagined the thumping of the grouse scaring colonizers away. Ancestors building dams to flood all the highways, railways, and pipeline right-of-ways. She offered herself to our nation. We dried and smoked her skin for the future generation. The children laughed and prayed for clear waters and fish without tumors. And she saw how we lived our lives in such good ways. She saw how we fight for her every single day. She wondered what now could be like if we all dove into the cold water and transformed. If we all offered ourselves for the goodness of the world. If we vowed to protect the young ones from the greed that lives within humanity. She wondered how we can make so many wrongs in such a short period of time. And she saw us crying into the rivers where she was. And she held our pain as it went with the currents. She looked up into the stars and casted our shadows into the reflection of the sky. I saw all of this as I sat beside the river and pleaded with Creator, why, oh why have our children left us? Why, oh why, have such awful things happened to us? Why, oh why, have we been seemingly forsaken? So I stepped into the water, dove in, and floated there for a moment. Looking into the reflection of the water, I saw White Wolf staring back at me. Hello, young one. I am here and will always be. I see your tears and listen to your prayers, and I wonder why all the same. I said, White Wolf, that doesn't answer anything. And we laughed, and we howled under the sun and the moon, under the stars that light our eyes, with all the animals, with all the children, And we fell asleep and traveled far, far away. In the dreamland we saw what could be and what has always been. And the sacred waters held us as we all slept. Na do be. Masi. My name is Victoria Radson or Dog Osa Tekwi, I'm Dene Sofli Ne and Ne To from the Barren Lands in so-called Northern Manitoba. I grew up surrounded by artists, poets, painters, playwrights, and I fought for our rights throughout my young years of adulthood and as a young person. And I've seen countless injustices done to our water. And I've learned so much on how to stay resilient and strong 
with all of these destructions. And I owe it all to the grandmothers and the grandfathers and all the two-spirit people in my life who have taught me how to heal my intergenerational trauma through the sacredness of water. And with these tattoos that I hold on my body, it's a reminder of why I need to keep protecting and honoring the sacredness of tun, of water. And I thank you all for listening to me today. Masicho. Please join me in giving a virtual shout out to these amazing performers. And again to the presenting sponsor, BMO Financial Group, all our exhibition partners, the artists, the curators, and the entire team who brought this show together. After being closed for many months due to the pandemic, we can't wait to welcome you back. Not only will you experience Nadobe, but also the new Inui Art Center and all that it has to offer. This 40,000 square foot building connects to the WAG on all levels, creating one of the largest cultural campuses in the country. Kamayuk, which means it is bright, it is lit in Anuktitut, bridges Canada's north and south through art and storytelling. Thank you all for joining us. And while we hope you can make it here in person before too long, you can also engage with Nadobe online for programming at wag.ca. Thank you again, Miigwech.